Happy Halloween. It's me, no fielding. I'm aware that this reference is so obscure and this is not my actual Halloween costume, but after that day when I realized I looked a bit like Noel with my hair, I thought I had to channel him for a little bit and I had to at least dress up as a man a little bit because that is my favorite Halloween costume, cosplaying as men. In the past, I have been David Bowie as King Jareth from Labyrinth. And yes, I did include the cod piece. It's a very pivotal part of the costume. I was then Vincent Vega from Pulp Fiction. I have also been Euphigenia Doubtfire, dear, because I was pregnant with Indy at the time. I thought, what costume could I do <laughs> with a pregnant belly, but still be a man? So I went with uh, Robin Williams dressing up as an old lady. And that was a lot of fun. I, I made sure to singe my tartars as well, because once again, attention to detail is a must. And then after that, my favorite costume, and probably the one that is the most time consuming, Jack Skellington from A Nightmare Before Christmas. So I have gone as Jack twice. The second time was because my workplace, when I was a librarian, were having a Halloween staff party. I rocked up, it was being held at a park in the middle of the day. And when I arrived, I was the only person in costume. Turns out not many people like to dress up for that one. It was a very awkward 45 minutes before a group of friends, colleagues, three of them came that were in costume. Uh, so I didn't feel as much of a wanker at that point, but I was dying, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty good at not feeling embarrassed because of how I look, but this was my first year working then. It was my first staff party and yeah, standing in full Jack outfit in the middle of the day, surrounded by people in regular clothing it was a bit, it was a bit much for me. I, I did feel a bit silly, but eventually some people came in costume and I was like, thank God. Cause I, I was about to bounce. But yeah, this year I have decided to go with something a bit more feminine. It's not something I do very often, but I wanted to try it out. We'll see. I'm, I'm not going as anything. I just can't be bothered. I normally love to really go all out for the costume, but at the moment, you know, finances are tight too. I don't want to be buying stuff. So I'm just using what I have on hand and making the most of it. So you'll see what I go as. But next year, I have decided I will put more effort in and I'll go back to my cross-dressing ways because that's what I really like to do for Halloween. So without much further ado, let me introduce you to this year's costume and this month's wrap up. Goodbye from the crow, man. So this is what I have gone with. It's basically a queen of hearts, just the wish version. <laughs> oh, queen of hearts. I don't think this at all heart mouth is going to last long but yes this way i didn't need to buy anything new all i got was a, a pack of stickers for a heart on the face so this is my outfit this year pink and fun so let's wrap up the month of october i did consume a lot of things i did watch a lot of things and read a lot of things so that portion of my segments so that portion of this wrap up will be packed so let's just get straight into it we'll start with tv the best thing and the only thing that I watched television wise was Agatha all along. Obsessed. Obsessed with this series. I just watched the two episode finale. I will not spoil anybody. I did shed a tear. I thought it was well done. It went in a direction that I wasn't anticipating. So I did not see that. But I'm interested. I'm intrigued. And I would watch if they do any more seasons. But that's up to the Disney gods. Films. I watched a lot of films. So we've got The Fall Guy. This was fun. Okay, this is silly, mindless. I will say that has given me a greater appreciation for stuntmen who risk their lives for entertainment. Full on, bro. I love Gosling. Blunt. Oh, look, she was a muscle mummy in that Tom Cruise movie, and that's probably the thing I loved her the most in. But otherwise, I find that she just doesn't have chemistry with anyone. And so I didn't buy the love story in this. Just There was nothing there. There was nothing there going on for me, so... Didn't watch it for the love angle, but did watch it for the Aaron Taylor Johnson and stunts. Watch Borderlands. Eww, oh my God. So I used to play that with my ex-husband. Murder, I mean, Murderbot. <gasps> oh my God, why can't I remember its name? Fuck getting old is shit. Uh, downside of getting old, guys. Your, your brain rots. It's not coming to me. It'll probably come to me in editing and I'll write it up on the screen. That was Claptrap. Oh my God, I got there. Claptrap was my favorite character. Uh, in the movie, same. 
I I don't understand why Kate Blanchett did. Oh my god, I'm going to sneeze. It's this goddamn week. No, oh, that's a weird one. Uh, Kate Blanchett shouldn't have done this movie. I she's not at Robert De Niro levels of desperation from where she's still having to work because she just procreated a child at 85. So I don't understand why she chose this film unless she was just like, you know what, for shits and gigs, guys, just want to do something random. The movie is fucking random. And look, some of the casting I got, Kevin Hart, I did not, did not get that casting. And the movie was trash. I'm sorry, it really was. It was okay, but it's not good. It's not good. My kids hated it, hated it. And now they are side-eyeing me every time I put a movie on for us to watch. It's like, is this going to be another Borderlands? I'm like, okay, guys, chill. So look, didn't like it. It's watchable, but I don't think it did the game justice. And I yeah, just don't understand some of the casting choices, but also don't understand why Kate Blanchett would do this. Then I watched The Love Witch for Halloween and it is cheesy. It is camp, guys, but the visuals gorgeous. I just feasted on that alone. It was enough to keep me fed. So did love that. And it's just the right amount of horror I enjoy in a horror film. You know, not too scary, not too brutal, but still love that. Definitely influenced my fashion taste a little bit. And thank you to everyone who gave me recommendations for movies to watch based on that. I also watched Blink twice. Uh, it was okay. It was fine. You know, it's something to pass the time. Channing Tatum is a bad guy. Mm, still don't buy it. Didn't buy it. Wasn't scared of him. Would Would take him on. And the main chick was just not captivating enough. She didn't have enough charisma to have the whole movie on her shoulders. So it was it was okay. I would have preferred Zoe Kravitz be the main main character. Then I would have bought it. Jack Part. Okay, so I will watch anything John Cena is in. Okay, I just like the guy. I just find him funny, and he's he's just I don't know. He just seems like a good person. I think he's the person that's that's granted the most Make a Wish wishes, and he just seems like a good guy. And I just find him very likable. He's one of those actors, which, yeah, I just think he's cool. Okay. And he was, he was good in this. I like him. Oh, the main chick, Aquafina. I just don't like her. She's this, she's Aquafina in every film she's in. And I've seen enough of Aquafina, you know? And I didn't love her in this. She sort of buzz killed the movie. Surprisingly, Machine Gun Kelly was entertaining. And I can't believe I'm saying those words. But yeah, I, I liked his bit in the movie. I thought it was funny. So it's once, once again, another movie that just passed the time. Then we have the wild, wild robot. My God, my God. Everyone is not joking when they say you're going to cry. When you watch this, I wasn't expecting much. Look, the animation could have been better, but Jesus Christ, Lord Almighty. I cried four separate times. Even Indy turned to me and was like, seriously, mommy, again? Yeah, babes, again. Just, oh, 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 cut me open. If you liked Iron Giant, Wally, and Migration, those three movies, you will love this. I personally died for Matt Berry playing the Grumpy Beaver. Oh my God. It's amazing. This is a five out of five star movie for me. Highly, highly recommend, even if you're an adult and you don't have children. Give it a watch. Then I watched The Witch, The Witch, as it used to be written back in the old days with Anya Taylor Joy. Eh, eh, meh. Look, it's got the, the vibes and the atmosphere, but the story was so slow and it wasn't scary enough. I was, I was expecting more thrills and chills. Didn't get as much. Like there's a nice little incest vibe going on if you like that. Didn't, did not like that. It was okay. It was okay. I was just expecting more from it. I was thinking, well, this is going to be arty and, and, and scary, but it was not. And then the weirdest fucking movie I've probably ever seen in my life, The Man Who Fell to Earth with David Bowie. Ready, 20 minutes late. Sounds cool. Where's the party? In space, Brett. In space. Space? Yeah. It is quite freaky, isn't it, Brett? Yeah. No. Goodbye, Brett. See you, Bowie. So I picked this up <laughs> because I read the book, which is a sci-fi book. Would recommend the sci-fi book and would recommend reading the book before watching this movie. Otherwise, you have no fucking clue what is going on. This is Bizarro Land. It's a choice. Um, it's basically a softcore pornography, alien style. So if that tickles your boat and you want to see David Bowie's bait and tackle, uh, twig and berries, 
then give it a give it a look see but i kind of wish i hadn't peeked behind the curtain at oz you know i oh oh ah ah eh, yeah it was something it was certainly a life experience that's all i'm going to say i talked about it a bit more in my book vlog which is coming up but yeah i look i think i'll remember that film for the rest of my life and and i'll be always what the fuck about it but yeah ah so, so much boobs bush balls and bulges that's all i'm gonna say about that uh youtube wise my girlfriend kate <laughs> reminded me of i think her name is christine mcconnell so i had watched her netflix show and thought it was phenomenal basically this chick is insanely talented and gorgeous and everything a goth girl could dream of okay she's got the spooky vibes just down pat but paired with this absolute beautiful elegance and this woman there is nothing she can't do she is a Jacqueline of all trades, guys, master of all trades. Not even a Jacqueline, she's a master of all trades. So if you didn't get to see her Netflix show, I don't think it's still on there. I'm not sure, didn't check. She has a YouTube channel. I think Kate said that mostly she posts on Patreon, I believe is her avenue of choice, but there are some videos and highly recommend. I'm going to link the broom one because, okay, one, the workmanship and creativity of this broom is fucking mind-blowing and two it made me cry she does something she inlays something inside the broom and i was not expecting that and oh it got me so good so highly recommend that video on to books i forgot to bring my stats with me but i think i read something insane like 90 something books this month 93 i think 22 were dnfs so i read 71 books in full a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I am aware that I am alone <laughs> and have a lot of time on my hands while I'm sitting at my desk looking at charts and just sitting at home while my kids are at home. Look, yeah, okay, that's all I do. If I am idle, I pick up a book. Mm -hmm. So that it, it stands that I read that many and I think my brain is so overloaded with stories now that I will probably have to take a break in December because I don't know how much more I can do. How many more stories I can fill in this noggin of mine? But not that many were great. Unfortunately, I didn't find a lot that resonated with me, that sung to my soul. The best cover was Worry. I think this cover is stunning. It's got a painted effect, just the color and the composition and the picture, mm, chef's kiss. My favorite books, so I would say for the nonfiction, it's Happy Death Club. I think this was so entertaining. I will link the individual videos down below that these books were discussed in, but that was definitely my favourite non-fic of the month and my favourite fiction I would have to give to a book that Kate recommended to me, which is The Miraculous Journey of Edward Talane. It is a picture book. I will not say it's for young children. It tackles some incredibly heavy things. This book also had me bawling. It hit me in the heart feels, guys. Ugh. There's a character named Bryce, and if you've read the book, tell me, tell me now, out of all of those people, that Bryce deserved it the most. I can't talk about Bryce because it turns out I haven't healed, and I don't want to fuck my makeup up. So those two are my favorite books of this month. Oh my god, fucking fan myself. <sighs> okay, music. I I found a lot of songs that I enjoyed. Uh, so we've got Damiano, we've got Damiano David, okay, from Murder Skin, who sexy sexy man voice of a damn angel okay love love Murder Skin's my favorite band so of course i checked out damiano's independent stuff and i liked silver lions which was a collaboration with labyrinth but he also just released one i think born with a broken heart mm, it's i still love his voice he can sing anything and i'll listen to it it's not my genre it's not my taste but i think maybe it's got more pop mass appeal but yeah, still, I enjoyed, I'll, I will take, I will put anything that he puts out into the world into my ears. Then I listened to a run, run, run. I feel like that's meant to say bitch and autocorrect has changed it by Melrose. I got to double check my note, my notes out because <laughs> I get autocorrected a lot. And also I, I, I am horrible with typos when I'm typing out. I don't have the dexterity and... I just leave things uncorrected and this one's this one's bit me in the ass 
Then there was Labour by Paris Paloma. I'm aware that a lot of these songs might be old. It's just if Spotify has recommended it to me on like a, a day list and I like it, I'm going to like it. Rebel Child by Dylan. To the Moon by Megan Trainer. Genesis Part 2 by Ray. This had me cackling at the lyrics. The devil works hard like my liver. Seriously, the, the lyrics are just phenomenal and amazing. Okay, and that's all the music. I'm sorry for making your ear, eardrums bleed with my <laughs> imitation of singing. Some people say I have a nice reading out loud voice. I cannot sing for shit. Cafes and restaurants. The favorite of this month was Society. It was posh and lush and felt very money, money, money. So the, the setting, the ambiance, the service could have been better. We asked for the dessert menu thrice, thrice. These bitches had to wait for those sweets to come. So food was good. It's fucking expensive. And I'm not going to sugarcoat that. They charge for a bottle of water. $45 for a bottle of water. You're off your rocker, mate. So yes. All right. Other random life stuff and purchases. This is supposed to be brains. Rice crispy brain treats. <laughs> So these are my little pumpkin cheesecake things. <laughs> I think they would have looked super cute with a little clove sticking out the top like a stalk, but otherwise our second spooky treat. Um, so I bought this. This is a little jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. Pumpkin spice. Oh, I just put a whole bunch of hair in my face. Pumpkin spice. So that was for halloween -y. Uh I will also insert footage here of what I got when I went shopping. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to show you my quick haul. So I got chocolates. There's none left. I've already eaten them. And I got myself some tea. So I got some tea. I got carrot, ginger, licorice, chicory root, beetroot, turmeric, and black pepper. Super cozy Christmas socks. So I like to wear socks in bed in winter because my feet freeze. I also got a matching gingerbread candle in this beautiful ceramic cup which I will keep afterwards I think it's gorgeous I got some knickers so I just got some frilly red panties to go with my new pajamas um, I in the colder months I just like to wear oversized t-shirts in summer I just wear what do you call them like satin nighties slips but yeah in winter I like to be covered so massive <laughs> massive cherry t-shirt because the brown one I've got is a bit too small my bum hangs out but there was also two light purple bras but I wasn't sure which one because it's to go with the purple dress I have so I'm like oh I'm better off bringing the dress and then trying the bras on and seeing which one looks better with it but that's that was my haul Indy where's your bit Indy got another capybara with a little hamburger backpack so pretty successful Hi, day sorry and I'm going to insert more footage. <laughs> You're going to have multiple insertions in this video of boo baskets that I made for my children, which is a thing now. So these are the boo baskets that I made for my kids. So they're the same, except Indy's got an additional present. So I also got this for Indy because Valentine got some makeup. So inside, we've got some shortbread cookies. An F meow, me meow, Halloween edition. A trick or treat candle that I believe is pumpkin spiced. And then we've just got some Halloween candy, so lollipop, some sort of bandage thing, some whatever that is. And then these guys, these are just like squishy Halloween little monsters. That guy's so cute. And over here we've got a bat and a ghosty. So that is what was in my kids' boo bags. I think I call them boo bags and I, I think I like that more. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the boo bag. And I had to laugh this morning, Indiana said, mommy, why don't we do one for Christmas and call it the ho 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 bag? That's my kid, bro. <laughs> Loved it. I'm like, oh, mummy already is one. So what else? Um, I got some charm necklaces. So for a little fun activity, my kids and I each made a charm necklace 
and I'll put pictures up there of her little charms. Obviously, I got tarot cards of the star and the sun card, and I got a mushroom and a pearl and a cross and a four-leaf clover, and I can't remember what else I got, but yeah, things that have some kind of meaning for me. Oh, I think it was a sacred heart, because I love that. This is a millennial. I realize this is millennial. So if you guys don't know, this is going to show that you're a millennial. Okay, you're going to show your age. I think the, the kids these days do. Oh my God. That is so much harder. Do this. Or oh, sometimes they do, they, do, they do this. They do one of those. But I still, it's so much easier. Like, instant. What's this shit? What? 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 Okay. I think that's everything that I've purchased. I haven't gone thrifting or nothing. And I will now insert clips of the garden. It is Halloween today. It's Halloween today. I'm not going to film trick or treaters. These are other people's children, obviously. So no footage from that. But that is what I've got on the agenda for today. Um, so yes, I'll leave you with the garden. And I shall leave you with the crochet and the deck portion of this video. So goodbye from me. Okay, so this is the current state of the wildflower bed. There's a lot of tall flowers. Yeah, as you can see it's gotten quite bushy but I'll go inside because there's some further in which are pretty cool we've got poppies which is so exciting to me because I bloody bloody love poppies and I've also planted this tree in the middle so this is going to be a big jacaranda tree which I think will look beautiful with the wildflowers underneath one of my new roses are also blooming, which is beautiful. The others haven't started yet, but there's been some beautiful roses around the neighborhood. Oh, I've got a purple one here, but this one's just died, so it's not looking very pretty, but I'm expecting some beautiful full blooms eventually. New wildflowers in my garden. If anyone knows what these are called, let me know. It's raining, so no backyard shots this time around, but We've got the peas growing. Hello, it's Chanel and welcome to the deck and crochet portion. So let's get straight into it. Here we have Seasons of the Witch, a star oracle by Lorian Anderson, Juliet Diaz, illustrated by Tiana Lukovic. So this was a pre-order that I made. It was from this year. So we've got the guidebook. This is mass market. Um, the these are all done the same way. So if you have one, then you know how they're all done. And I think the guidebooks are very well done. I particularly do enjoy the themed spreads. I, I think they're always pretty, pretty good. Some of the cards have an extra element. Some do not. It just depends on the card. But good guidebook. These... These are the backs, which I think are pretty cute. I do like the orange and purple. And they've got the silver holographic edges and they're on that typical glossy cardstock now. I am not sure I'm going to keep this deck to be perfectly frank. I think I will be rehoming it. Astara to me, I know that in the Northern Hemisphere it's not spring, obviously it's spring down here, but Astara does represent rebirth and renewal and fertility and all of those things that you would associate with spring. So it's got a much higher energy than this deck. This deck feels so somber. It feels like an autumn deck. That's the energy I'm getting from it. It's quite serious, like the write-ups as well. I'm just not feeling a star with this. And I want to know if anybody else who's gotten this also agrees, or even just looking at the illustrations alone, are you getting a star vibes? Because I am not. I'm not. I'm feeling it's very internal. It's very hibern hibernatory, uh, quiet and con. To play contemplative, I'm not feeling the celebration kind of energy from Ostara. It, it kind of bummed me out. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't love it. I'm sorry. And I just don't feel the need for it. It just, yeah, it's supposed to be an Ostara Oracle and it's just not bringing that for me in terms of both the illustration and the write-ups for the subjects. Like I said, it's just too serious and too somber. So I think I will be including this in my deck giveaway, which is coming up next month in November, as usual. Um, so a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, this one just wasn't wasn't to my taste. If this if this doesn't bother you at all, or you think, oh, I actually think this is a accurate representation of Ostara, then you'll probably really enjoy it. Just for me, it just didn't connect. It didn't vibe. 
it didn't align with my own personal opinions so yeah i will be rehoming this one okay next up we have the cardamom dreams tarot so this is by joven lee but it's also by that studio i can't remember what it's called i'm sure i'll see it somewhere um it came with this bag which i think is very cute it's the same on either side i've kept mine in the box so the box is also cute let's put that the right way very cute inside here you've got the guidebook uh, beautiful rose petal cover it's it's very basic and it's not only basic it just doesn't make sense to me it's not sensical for me uh let's just read let's just read one so you can see what i mean i bet you i'll read one and it'll be like oh you know that makes sense anyone okay so ten of wands there were too many sticks in his hand even if he tried his best he still couldn't hold them i feel like i can't see the road ahead can someone help me there's nothing you can do about it if you want to do it well you have to do it yourself it's better to ask for help if, than to have multiple jobs okay look that one's kind of correct but I, i'm telling you there are definitely ones in here that just i was like what do you mean how is that the meaning okay we've got, we got ace of swords my life by my not day Idea is very important as long as there is a firm mind. Feeling is already half the battle. A sword that could break through the clouds would be invincible. Clear cognition, reliable new ideas. Are you kidding me? Think about it. Look, that one's just probably a translation issue. I should have written written down the ones that were really like, what are you talking about? It was almost as if they were alluding to some kind of established story. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know this story. How how does this pertain just to my life? Like, what are you, why are you talking about a particular character here? So some of them were that. Uh, so yeah, I just stopped using the guidebook because it just muddled things for me. So this was a bit pointless um, for me. I definitely would not recommend this deck for a beginner if they're trying to learn from this guidebook. Okay, so the backs, I think the backs are beautiful. I love the foiling. The cardstock is really thin and flimsy and I would not, like you can see that's already bent it. Um, I would not bend this deck at all. It will it will warp instantly. I like the silver holographic edging. I think that's gorgeous. And it's got a linen cardstock, so it's nice. It's just too thin. It's too thin and fragile. So I, when I saw this on Kickstarter, sorry, there were two anime style decks for sale and I was having such a hard time deciding between the two of them. And I ended up going for this one and I feel like I should have gone for the other one. I, oh, I'm just not connecting to this. And the readings are not profound at, at this point in time anyway when using it. Like I said, the fact that too, the guidebook is completely um, sort of unusable for me also detracts, you know, points from this. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's very cute. Um, like I do like the illustration style. I think it's adorable. It's very Sailor Moon-esque and that's what I was in the mood for. I don't have a lot of those decks. I think the one I have the most of in that style is Dream Within Dreams, but that's a multi-artist deck. So I did want something that was more cohesive in the one style. But yeah, at the moment, I'm not loving it. It's kind of feeling very fluffy and um, insubstantial. And like I said, because there were two of these decks and I was so torn between the two of them, I just feel a bit disappointed. Because I'm like, oh no, maybe I would have loved the other one even more. And I don't even remember what it was called because I didn't save it. If anyone else was on Kickstarter and saw this deck, and they also saw the other deck that it was also a very similar illustration style and they do know the name of it. Please let me know because I want to do ch check it out to see if it is for sale elsewhere now. But yeah, I'm not sure guys. Um, This one is going into purgatory and I'm going to use it a little bit more and then try to see if I can find a pair that really brings the most out of it because I haven't done that. I just haven't had time to go through every deck I own and see which one suits the most. I had just a couple out and I'm like, none of them really felt like super vibey so I might try to see if it has a mate in my collection because yeah I don't know I don't know I just don't I just don't love it and I could just keep it because it is beautiful and it's a kickstarter deck but I don't know if I want to be that kind of collector where I just have decks that I never use uh I have to decide where I where I stand on that front like some decks it's easy to rehome like the Ostara I know I'm never I'm never going to use it and it's a mass market deck and I'm not in love with anything about it whereas this one I do like I do like it. That's why I bought it. It's just, yeah, it just upsets me because I'm on such a low buy year this year and there's so many decks I haven't purchased. And then, so when I do pick one over others and it doesn't amaze me or it's not instant love, I, it bums me out because I'm like, well, I could have picked another one instead, but I didn't. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yes, it's not going anywhere for the meantime. For 
quite a while, I will give this a decent shot. And then, like I said, decide if I just want to have it sitting there or if I do want to rehome it. But this was the Cardamom Dreams Tarot. Okay, so next up, we've got a deck in here. I did not uh, make this bag for this deck. This was just a bag I had lying around. So this was one of my, obviously, original when I just got into crocheting bags and I didn't have a deck that went in here. So I think this yarn is a great southern yarn because it's, oh, they've got such a distinct feel and I'm pretty sure it's great southern yarn. No idea what color, but it had it on hand and I felt like, you know, it's, it's similar enough. It's got the browns and that's what I was looking for. So rather than use a new yarn, I'll use one that was already made. So this is the Slow Tarot. This was an indie deck. This is the guidebook. This is like not a great guidebook, to be honest. Uh, you've got a decent amount about the mages, but then the rest of the minor arcana are split up this way. So you've got here the fours. And I'll have a bit about fours in general and then a one word meaning for each each card. So it's just one keyword. So once again, would not recommend this for a beginner and I didn't end up using this at all. These are the backs which I think are absolutely gorgeous. I love them. They're simple, but they're beautiful. I did mine in a brown that suits the color on the side, kept it simple. It's a beautiful linen cardstock, great quality. The, oh, it's upside down. The aces are done differently, which I don't mind at all. Um, they're borderless. One second, I need to sneeze. I don't mind that at all. Um, and then each suit sort of has a different, I think it has a different border. Yeah, it has a different color on the border. Yeah, I, I am obsessed with the art in this deck. This was a, a unicorn deck for me. When I saw it, it wasn't in stock. So I thought, oh man, I'm never going to get it. And then I think it was, oh, I don't remember the channel, something dreams. I'll put the link up above. I saw it on someone's channel. I'll remember later. It's the brain fog, guys. And I was like, it's back in stock. Yeah, I'm buying that immediately. So there's, there's a few decks that are on my unicorn list. And if they ever come back in stock, it's an immediate purchase because I've had time to think about these decks, to think, do I still want them? And if they're still on my list, that means, yes, I do want them. And it's an instant purchase. So yeah, I, I purchased this immediately. I just love it. I think it's so stunning. There, I remember the first card I saw in this deck that piqued my interest. It was the Seven of Cups. If we go past, I'll pull it up. That was the card that caught my attention. I'm like, what is that deck? Wait scroll back what's this deck called and i that's when i put it on my unicorn list but i have had an instant connection with it it's just read beautifully i loved its energy that is such a powerful picture i think if you've ever been a child that is afraid of a parent when you break things um you know that feeling so yeah this is i would definitely say it's got a heavier energy that's just how i feel i don't feel like it's a very light light and easy breezy deck even though some of the pictures are brighter this is stunning so this is an additional card it's called atonement unfortunately there is no write-up for this in there which is a bummer especially if you're using putting in a card that's an original and your own creation not to have any meaning besides the word so obviously i'm just going off the word atonement but this is beautiful and probably my favorite illustrated card in the deck i just wish it had a write-up to go along with it that's the only thing but yeah no, this is stunning I think could see this definitely as being a deck too that you could utilize for creative writing purposes each picture just feels so evocative and like it has its own story it'd be really fun to use this for creative writing prompts or um, as what's the journeying into the deck what's it called what's the term for that when you put yourself into the card it'll probably come to me later oh man I really wish I didn't have brain fog Anybody else that has chronic illness and has that as one of their symptoms, I'm sure you commiserate where you feel like your brilliance, your your brain is behind a goddamn wall of plexiglass and you're like, I need to get in there. <laughs> I would like to be able to use it, please. <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, I haven't come across the similar cups yet. I'm going to, here it is. So this was, I don't know why, but this was just called out to me so much. It feels very fairy tale, fantasy book-esque. And I loved seeing what things were inside the cups. It was just so fascinating to me. But yeah, this was, oh my God, no regrets. I, I really love this deck. I think it's amazing. And I don't even want to put it away. I kind of want to keep it out. But it's, I'm heading into, we're in spring. And it just doesn't, doesn't feel like the right energy for me at this point in time. But I fucking love my time with it. I paired it with a lot of things. And I, and I think there were some great pairings. But at the moment, whenever I get a new deck now, I do prefer just to use it on its own. I don't know what that is that I've switched up. Wasn't I didn't used to be that way, but at the moment 
I don't want any other energies influencing it. I just kind of want to keep it quarantined. I guess, you know, like you do with cats when you bring them in, you can't just chuck them in amongst your other cats. You have to keep them separated for a bit. And that's what I'm doing. So yeah, love this deck. The Slow Tarot by Lucy Bryant. Okay, so now we're down to the final deck. So this bag I did make, I made it a bit too big. That's what happens because it's shell stitch. So if I'd done it, shell stitch is done in the number of six. So you either have six chains or you have 12 or you have 18 and six less would have been too small. So I went bigger. This yarn is by Circus Tonic. It's in the color Kiwa. It's DK or eight ply. And I did it in shell stitch because I think shell stitch is very pretty. So it kind of goes, I feel like it kind of goes, right? Like Ella Indy picked the button and she wanted to do a yellow button to, to represent the moon. This is the Fay Whispers. Oh my God, I haven't even said it. This is a Fay Whispers by Rochelle from Amethyst Ascension. So these are the backs which I am in love with. I edged mine in a dark blue to go with the dark blue hints. It is on a beautiful linen cardstock and you have a title and then you've got the little meaning down below. So it's not a guidebook situation. It's just what you see on the cards. So I, out of all of um, Rochelle's decks that she's got at the moment, she's got so many. So there's something there for everyone. This was the one that I was drawn to the most. Look, it's got mushrooms and fairies and flowers and beautiful people. So right up my alley. This is a deck that I have been using as a What's the word? Supplementary? Is that the term that we all use for decks that you sort of add to the end of a reading? You sort of done your reading and then you're like, all right, and we're going to add a, add a card to sort of close the reading up and give a final message. So that's how I've been using it. And it's been working beautifully for that. This also went with a lot of decks because I have a lot of fairy tale, fairy, woodland, forest, mushroom decks in my collection. So it just slotted right in. But there's a lot of cards. So there's a lot of different meanings, which I think is fantastic. And I've had pulled a different card every day since I have used it. So it's been very fresh and full of variety. But yeah, I think it's stunning. I don't know if the images are AI or not. I didn't ask, but I think they're very pretty and I wanted to support my friend with her decks. And this is the one I picked and no regrets. Once again, this is staying in my collection. I think it's darling. It's very sweet. I think too, if you just want to pull out a, nice, a message for the day, this is one of those decks. It's just very quick, easy, simple readings. And it's very convenient for that. I've done that as well, where I've just gone, you know what, I don't want to do tarot or oracle. I just want to pull one little card for the day and be like, okay, join the fairies for a tea party. So straight away, I'm like, all right, we're going to have tea today. I'm going to maybe call my friends. I'll socialize. And it just peps me up. It's an instant mood booster. So this was a Fae Whispers oracle. I think that's what it's called. I really should be, I'm not organized either. <laughs> so this is a bit chaotic. Uh, but yes, this was by Amethyst Ascension. And these are all the decks that came in this month. So until next time, stay wild, Star Child. Oh, there it is. Look, title card. <laughs> Fate with Spurs. I was right. <laughs> See you later, guys.